Hello and welcome to series two of Silent Command Stream. Uh, this series is going to cover intermediate level skills. We're going to talk about taking the skills that we uh, learned in our fundamental conducting series to the next level and talk about how we can really learn more about conducting and learn more about style and using our patterns to be as utilitous as possible, maximize our utility. So the first thing that we're gonna cover in this video one is how to accommodate faster tempos with faster patterns, right? So previously we talked about fixed point style, four, four, three, four, and two, four, where we conduct each beat with a rebound, right? So there's my four, four, three, four, and two, four. So say that our tempo is faster at about 180. When the tempo is that fast, doing fixed point like this sometimes works, but it's so fast that if I try and do this for a long period of time, I'm going to get tired. My arms are going to tire out, even if I'm using the correct technique. So we have what I like to call stopped time to accommodate faster tempos. And it's called stopped time because instead of rebounding like we do in fixed point, we're going to stop on the ictus. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Here's what our stopped time pattern looks like. That is stopped time 4-4. Four, four. So I'll break it down for you. Beat one, contact ik twos. Beat two, lead from beat one. And this is tricky and a lot of people sort of get this wrong. One, lead, three, leave, one. So you can see how it's different than beat two being up here. Beat two is not up here. Beat two is when I leave from beat one. And a lot of people make a mistake and think that two is up here and it throws the timing off for beat one and beat three later on. So one, leave, three, leave, one. So one and three are on the ictus, two and four are leaving the ictus. A great exercise that you can do to test yourself and make sure that the beats two and four are in time is to do what I just did. One, leave, three, leave. One, leave, three. Then we're gonna cut out the one and three. Leave, 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 leave. Two, four, two, four, one. And when we have those beats present and when we're being sure that we're staying right on time on two and four, it gives us another level of consistency and it's gonna keep beats one and three in time. But if we don't have that, then we get something like this. <laughs> Where the beats are not consistent, the space between them is not consistent, and it's harder to read. One, leave, three, leave, one. That's our four, four stopped time pattern. Now let's go over 3-4 because 2-4 is just a variant of 4-4. Four, four. Here's our 3-4 pattern. Envision a right triangle and the hypotenuse, the longest end, we're going to travel up. It's going to look like this. 1-2-3. 1-2-3. 1-2-3-1. This pattern is a little bit tricky. I would say it's probably the hardest of our stopped time patterns because it has two leaves in a row. We contact the ictus on beat one, one. Then leaving from beat one is beat two. And beat three is when we leave from this area that we stop in out here. And I know that seems a little bit unclear, a little bit nebulous, but let me show you what I mean in context. One, leave, leave, one, leave, leave, one, leave, leave, one. So you can see how the eye does not read the stopping of the motion. The eye reads the leaving from the beat, right? Even if I try to go one, two, three, one, two, three, one, it's harder to read that stop when it's traveling this way than it is to read the one, leave, leave, one, leave, leave, one. And many of us see that pattern and think that two is here and three is here, but really one, uh, I'm sorry, two is leaving from one and three is leaving from two. So if you keep those beats in time in the same way, do the same exercise that we did for 4-4, four, four, but adapt it for 3-4, one, leave, 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 one. Then that's gonna keep all three beats of this pattern in time, and that is what is going to make 
this meter clear and give a definition on the field. One other thing that you can be sure to focus on with stopped time and with faster tempos is that we contact the ictus with firmness, right? We don't want to rebound, so we can hit it as hard as we want. One, three, one, three. That level of crispness and firmness that I'm hitting the ictus with is giving me a lot of clarity. Our hammering sound is back up. Um, so the harder that I hit it, the more clarity it gets. But you'll see when I show you in just a second, if I don't have that firmness and crisp, crispness, it's gonna be a little bit too thick and my ictus is gonna get undefined. You can see how here, I'm taking too long to stop on the ictus and it's less clear because there's not a defined one. So be sure that we have one, three, one, leap, three, leap, one, and that that ictus motion is clear and crisp when we stick it on the ictus. So I like to imagine like, you stick a shoe in gum and it just sticks to the ground, that's the kind of motion that we want when we contact the ictus. All right, that's it for video one. Mm, excuse me, that's it for video one. In video two, we're gonna talk about some more advanced techniques in our intermediate level series. Thank you very much.